move on to those uh, topical questions that have been listed for the Minister. And uh, the names at 3, 6 and 8 have been withdrawn. Uh, I call Mr Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Can the Minister advise on when, when he is likely to announce his option study for Craig Antlet Crossroads? Or, or has the recent maintenance work that is currently being carried out, does it mean that this upgrade is unlikely now to happen? I'm grateful to the uh, member for his uh, supplementary question, and indeed uh, he will know uh, of, the, of the work that is uh, planned and, um, at, at Craig Antlet, uh, the resurfacing scheme. Uh, and that is very welcome, but that is uh, separate to um, and in addition to uh, the, uh, the, the issue that, that, that he's raising about uh, the issue at the crossroads. Um, uh, I know that uh, there's been a significant uh, amount of interest within public representatives uh, on the issue. The member will recall the, the meeting on site some time ago. We uh, have had further, I think, correspondence from residents uh, in the area, we are reflecting on that and we hope at some stage, uh, early in the new year most likely, that there will be a, a public consultation. Uh, there seems to be still uh, a difference of opinion as to which, uh, we, which option uh, uh, we should go for, but uh, we will continue to work at um, the issue and hopefully resolve it. And for a supplement. Thank you. Thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, can the Minister perhaps give us some more information as to how he is going to carry out this proposed consultation on the various options? And does he recognise the upgrade of the junction as a priority within his programme uh, and also uh, recognise how important it is to local residents, farmers and the, the North Down commuters within the area? Mr. Uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, I, I, I can assure the member that, uh, that, uh, that, as is normal with public consultations, that uh, every opportunity will be um, given to, uh, for people to express their, their, uh, their views on these issues, and, uh, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll certainly provide that opportunity, and including uh, public representatives too. In terms of um, uh, the, the scheme itself, um, that will always be subject to available finance, and, and of course, um, the member knows that uh, you know finance is a very real issue when it comes to um, uh, uh, upgrading and improving uh, the road network and indeed structural maintenance. And uh, so it costs like something like 130 million pounds to maintain the, the road structures that we have. Um, and obviously, we're, we're seeking to do um, uh, improvements over and beyond that. But that is a, a significant challenge, and I've, I've no doubt that, that uh, the member will want to put in a good word to, uh, uh, on, on my behalf to his party colleague, the finance minister, Simon Hamilton. <laughs> call Ms. Rosalind McCorley. Um, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Can I ask uh, the minister what contractual arrangements has DRD in place? with the consultants who are carrying out the review of the EU Habitats Directive in relation to the A5? Well, can I, can I say it, uh, to, to the member, the, the, the issue of the A5 has, of course, um, had significant um, uh, debate uh, and responses from me uh, over the period. Um, and uh, we continue to uh, work uh, to, uh, to, to deal with the uh, to remedy, if you like, um, the, uh, the issue highlighted by, by, the, uh, by the High Court uh, in its determination. Um, and let me say that um, uh, we, we have uh, continued to work on the preparatory uh, arrangements um, in terms of the groundworks, uh, and we will continue to do that. Um, we, preliminary works uh, were carried out uh, in terms of uh, the reinstatement uh, of, of lands and, and rectifying works. Preliminary works were carried out between January and March 2013. Uh, these uh, involved erecting fences uh, uh, on the vesting line, geotechnical investigations, archaeological investigations, ecolo ecology works, and the full range of works. And of course, we had given uh, individual farmers the option of carrying out those works themselves to our satisfaction. Uh, uh, my, um, 
uh, I understand that most of those works are now completed uh, and we continue to work with farmers in the area um, to continue to work through all of these issues. Ms. Rosa McCorley for a supplementary. I thank the Minister for his answer. Can I ask the Minister, can he provide a costing for the retention of consultants on the A5 project? I will want to um, uh, respond to the uh, member uh, in writing with an with absolute detailed and accurate uh, response to that. What I can say is that um, 108 million um, pounds um, has been uh, reallocated from the AFA budget since the court ruling. The member will be aware of that for, um, because of the announcements made. Um, and um, in terms of money spent on the new preparatory works, um, £748,364 uh, spent between April 2013 and the end of October 2013 for traffic and environmental surveys, reviews and assessments. I'm assuming that that includes consultants' uh, fees in that, but we will confirm that with you uh, uh, in writing. Mr. David Michael Veen. Thank you very much, Mr. Prince of Deputy Speaker. Um, I wonder if I could ask the Minister what comfort he would be able to bring to the elderly residents of the Upper Princess Street area in Ballymena, um, whose lives have become almost intolerable due to the abandonment of cars in their quiet streets due to the lack of parking at Ballymena train and bus station. Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the uh, member for his uh, supplementary question. Uh, and of course, um, I suppose one of the, the real successes um, of uh, increased rail usage uh, has, has seen, uh, I suppose, a problem emerge in some areas uh, as to the lack of available parking. We are, of course, always uh, in business of, of improving those uh, parking facilities, be they park and share or park and ride. Uh, and I can think of a, 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 of a number of, of uh, uh, stations which, which have benefited uh, uh, from that. Uh, we will continue to work uh, on the issues uh, around Ballymena, uh, and if the member uh, wants to, to, uh, to write to me uh, in more detailed terms, I um, will happy, happily correspond with him. Well, Mr. David Michael Veen. Thank you very much, Mr. Prince, with Deputy Speaker. And I do thank the Minister for his answer, and, and I will uh, indeed take him up on his offer to write to him. However, the Minister will be aware that um, the reason that the Balamine issue has, has exacerbated is because there is a train station in Cullybacky which has virtually no parking facilities. I wonder would the Minister be prepared to give us an update today um, after 40 years of lobbying from various parties in the area? Are we any closer to getting a park and ride facility in the Cullybacky area? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, to the member for his uh, supplementary question, uh, uh, and indeed uh, I, I will uh, correspond, uh, correspond with him directly and provide an update uh, to him on, on that issue. The member will know that um, it is not possible to cover every aspect of topical questions, and uh, car parking in, in, in Cullybaggy uh, didn't feature this time, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly uh, we'll, we'll we will we'll certainly make sure that uh, we provide an answer at the earliest opportunity. Mr. Phil Flanagan. I hope the Minister is better prepared for car parking problems in Enniskillen. Uh, the, the Minister um, recently announced a, a scheme for festive shoppers um, on the 13th of November, which um, improved parking facilities and parking ride schemes in Belfast, Derry, Newry, and Lisburn. But could the Minister explain to me why towns like Enniskillen have been left off the map? Well, the member will know that um, if he knew anything about parking anywhere, um, he would know that uh, we did not introduce uh, on street car parking charges, uh, which was the policy of his party colleague and my predecessor, Conor Murphy. Uh, so we avoided that, and so we uh, provided relief uh, in a great many of the towns uh, across Northern Ireland, uh, and uh, th that continues to be the case. Uh, the difference in some of our other locations, the locations that he's mentioned, Londonderry, Lisburn, Newry, and parts of Belfast, are that uh, there were uh, on-street car, park, uh, car parking charges introduced there, uh, and, and therefore um, it's felt uh, appropriate and fair uh, in, uh, in the run-up to the festive period that, uh, that people should benefit in those areas from the same um, uh, advantages that, they, that, that, that people have in other towns across Northern Ireland. Phil Flanagan for a supplement. 
I, I thank the, the Minister for his answer, and he done well in, in evading the question. So I, I'll try again. I'll use the actual um, terminology of a car park instead of car parking. Can the Minister tell us what consideration he has given to extending free car parking charges to car parks in places like Enniskillen for the festive period? Well, <clears throat> thank the Minister. I thank the um, member for his. Uh, Supplementary question. The member, I, I, I think, uh, seems to be confused between um, on street car parking uh, um, and, and indeed car parking. And I have made clear uh, previously, I think, both in the House and outside of the House, uh, my desire that were um, a town or a location uh, wished to avail of a special period of free parking, then the local council in that area can. Uh, negotiate with my department to provide such a facility to, to the benefit of, of ratepayers. The uh, member has considerable influence at Fermanagh uh, District Council, and I am sure he will want to bring that to bear uh, so that it happens in, in a skill and in other potential areas, because it has already happened. For example, uh, Newton Abbey Council uh, have made similar arrangements for uh, uh, Ballyclare, the town of Ballyclare, in the run up to Christmas. So I want to encourage that. And I think um, uh, a positive attitude can be taken on behalf of my department um, and hopefully uh, to the benefit of, of uh, not only the ratepayers but also uh, the, the traders and the shop owners in towns across Northern Ireland, including in Iskill. Oh, Mr Michael Majimsey. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, does he plan to make an announcement relaxing parking restrictions for Belfast City Centre in the run-up to Christmas? I am grateful to the, uh, to the member for his uh, supplementary question, and indeed uh, the member um, will know that um, I have recently made uh, an announcement in respect of Belfast and indeed other places, uh, including um, free Saturday park and ride services beginning uh, last weekend on the 16th uh, of November. Free uh, evening uh, park and ride services will start on the 2nd of December in line with late night shopping arrangements. And of course, uh, Translink, uh, he will know, have discounted uh, fares and restrictions uh, um, uh, and are offering um, uh, considerable savings. And indeed, of course, there will be uh, the annual moratorium on uh, roadworks within uh, the Belfast area. Mr. Michael Majimsey, uh, for uh, Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, uh, could I welcome uh, uh, that, th those uh, announcements? But could I also make the point that, bearing in mind the challenges that Belfast City, Council, Belfast City Centre retailers have had this year, what with congestion, roadworks, bus lanes, etc., uh, all grievously affecting businesses, and bearing in mind also that Christmas shoppers will use their car, it is the preferred means uh, of transport rather than buses rather than bicycles uh, or, or, or walking, that is it not sensible to extend, this, uh, 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 extend uh, the, the moratorium on restrictions to the, to the, to the motorist in Belfast City Centre in the run-up to Christmas, and particularly in weekends, could I suggest abandoning the bus lanes? Thank you. Well, I am grateful to the, uh, to the member for his, uh, for his supplementary question. Uh, I uh, have to say, but I, um, the, the, the actual evidence uh, of um, increased bus usage um, in, in the centre of Belfast, uh, carrying even more passengers um, uh, consistently, um, uh, over a, a million and a half uh, more journeys made uh, last year, uh, the increased level of, uh, of, of, of train uh, journeys. Uh, and, uh, and I think uh, a great many people do indeed uh, access the centre of Belfast by using public transport, and I welcome that. And I had the opportunity, um, not last weekend, but the previous weekend, to be shopping with my wife and family in the centre of Belfast, and, uh, and I found it a very good experience. Uh, and uh, and I, I think there is a buzz, uh, and hopefully a Christmas buzz, uh, that, that will uh, impact positively for Belfast, and I want to see that continue. That is why I brought forward the measures that I have outlined. And of course, um, uh, and I don't underestimate the challenges that other towns, uh, local towns, and, and, and indeed other cities uh, have in the run-up to Christmas. And, and I want to encourage everyone uh, to, to shop local uh, and to shop in, in their local area. Uh, but I do think that uh, the measures that we are seeking to bring forward uh, to improve public transport 
uh, do are showing benefit and will continue to show benefit. Thank you. And that brings an end to topical questions. The House will take its ease.